right. Good morning, everyone. Take your hymn book. Find page 446. And we're going to sing Redeemed How I Love to Proclaim It. Hopefully you are redeemed. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, called he arose but in our book they call it low in the grave he lay because they're that away you know He 
might want to sing one more song or one more verse uh, of the song I uh, forgot about that. Uh, I think it's called He Lives. Yeah, if I can find it real quick. Good job. That's it. 438. We we just we're just gonna maybe we'll just sing the first verse right now. We may sing it again next week, but unless I take a notion in my might sing the whole thing, I don't know. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me, how long I swear away. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Get your Bibles out, please, and find Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, Easter is almost here, and uh, I just felt compelled to preach in a series here on the resurrection and um, the title of the message is called mission accomplished All right and of course this will be part one since we're just now getting started with this matthew 28 we're going to read verse one through the first part of verse six it says in the end of the sabbath as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week came mary magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. 
And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the, excuse me, unto the women, fear not, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. He is risen. What a statement. What a magnificent statement. Only three little words. There's hardly been a greater declaration ever made than that statement. He is risen. He's no longer in the grave. He is risen. He, he's alive again, back from the dead. Why is it such a great thing, a statement? Because of what it meant to the women there at that time, of what it meant to the disciples and his followers, and what it meant and means to the whole world. Okay, These ladies went to the grave with but left there with rejoicing okay because of that statement uh, instead of dealing with a dead body they find he's no longer dead he's alive okay and uh, uh, they, they came to the tomb probably slowly I, I picture them walking down the dusty road carrying their ointments and their spices and and, and I picture them walking and, and discussing, you know, who's going to roll the stone away from us? And, and but they're going and, uh, and they're probably going very slowly. And uh, because of the sorrow that's in their hearts and the tears that's on their faces. But boy, when they left, I bet they left there quickly. I don't think they were dragging around or, or, or feeling down. Okay. They were excited. They were rejoicing now. Okay, they left in a hurry. Okay, and so, uh, and for them and for us, it means everything. He is risen. Without the resurrection, all would be for naught. All would be lost. What would life be worth? If Jesus hadn't risen from the dead. Okay. What purpose would there be to even live? Think about that. What reason would there be or was there for them? What, what reason would there be to go on? What hope do we have? If he stayed dead, if he stayed dead, listen to me, then his bones would still be in the grave today. And all would be lost. Nothing would have counted. Nothing would have mattered. You see, if he didn't rise, then all our hopes, all of our dreams of anything good, they would all die as well. Okay, purpose, meaning, truth, wouldn't matter. Do whatever. Because, but instead, because I can face tomorrow. Okay, I don't have to fear all fear is gone. I can know the one who holds the future and, and know that it'll all be fine. Why? Because he lives. Because he is risen. Okay, now, Jesus came here to this earth on a mission. Did you know that? He came with a purpose. He came on a mission. And that's my message today that I want to talk about. He came, a mission, mission accomplished. Okay, he came here on a mission. He had several jobs to do that had to be accomplished in order for any of us to have a chance at true, lasting peace and love and security and hope and forgiveness and joy and all that stuff. Okay? 
He needed to accomplish all these things. We're going to get into probably three of them, these things today, and we'll get into some more next week. Okay, and maybe some more after that. I don't know. Uh, but uh, so what was his mission? Number one, he came to reveal the Father. Okay, Jesus came to this earth. One of the reasons he came here was to reveal to us the Father. In John chapter 8, verse 19, says this. Jesus said, if ye had known me, ye should have known my Father. Okay? Uh, in John 10, 30, he says, I and my Father are one. See, Jesus came so that we could see what God looks like, what he is like, what kind of uh, person he is, who he is. Colossians 1.15 says, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Okay, up back through time and through the ages and through the Old Testament, uh, we knew that there was a God, but he's a spirit. And, and what does he look like or how do you how do you picture him? See, his mission was to show, Jesus' mission was to show us what God looks like, humanly speaking. We're humans. We, we need illustrations and things that relate to us. There's a reason we can't communicate with animals. They can't communicate with us. We can't understand each other because we're different beings. Well, God, we're made in the image of God, but we're not God. And we, we can't understand. And we needed to relate. We need to understand and see him in, a, in, a, in terms that we can relate to. So he came to reveal God the Father to us in human form, humanly speaking. We know that eyes, that the eyes of flesh cannot possibly look at the Almighty God and live. The Bible says that. Okay. Not only could our eyes not behold such light and glory, but neither could our minds comprehend him. Okay, our little finite brains. Our, when we say pea brain, we mean it. Now, it, it may be true. I heard that uh, like an ostrich or a chicken or something like that, that their, that their eye is actually bigger than their brain. But that is an illustration of us. Now, maybe our heads are this big and we supposedly are the, the creatures, you know, on the highest of the food chain and we're the most, we're the most intelligent and all that. But we have pea brains. You're in my little mind can't can't do anything on its own hardly and can't fathom or understand the greatness and the vastness of Almighty God. Okay? And besides that, our bodies uh, couldn't remain alive if we did see him, okay? Uh, we, we just couldn't do it. Now, but God... Now think about this, God who is holy and righteous and perfect and mighty for that matter loved us so much that he wanted to be able to relate to us and to know us personally. Okay? We who are unholy, unworthy, unrighteous, incapable of anything, God wanted to know us. He wanted to reveal himself to us and relate to us. And he wanted us to be able to know and understand him as well. Now listen to me. If Jesus hadn't risen and was still dead, then he wouldn't be God. All his works, okay, all his teachings and all of his good deeds and all of the things that he did while he was here would just be good deeds done by a, another great yet sinful man. If he was still dead, it would mean he was a sinner just like all of us and that we'd have never, we, we'd still, we still wouldn't know what God looks like but listen to me he did rise 
okay? He is risen. He is God. That's how he rose. No other person has ever raised themselves from the dead, okay? But God did. Jesus did. He was a man, and he died, but he brought himself back to life. He is God, and he rose again. That's why it's so wonderful. That's why it's so glorious. And it's glorious and wonderful personally to us because we can get to know him because of this. If you want to know what God looks like, look at Jesus. Get in the Bible. Find, go through the Gospels. Read and study his life. Okay? Look in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Find, those are Gospels that were written about him and his life and his ministry and all the works and all the great things they did. And so go through and, and listen and read. And, find, and you, you know what you'll find? You'll begin to see God and picture him for yourself and see what he's like and know who he is. He's the image of the invisible God. Did he succeed in showing us God? Yes. Mission accomplished. Okay, number two. Another part of his mission is this. His mission was he came to reveal the Father to us, but then he also came to rekindle the wavering hope of the coming Messiah. Okay? Thousands of years had passed since the prophecies that a Messiah was coming to this earth. Okay? Since it first was prophesied and through the through the years, more prophecies you know came along and more clearer things. And but thousands of years had passed uh, about him coming. Hadn't come yet. Jesus came to fulfill that wonderful promise that he would come to this earth. Okay? Remember Andrew in the book of John, chapter 1? Remember Andrew, Peter's brother? John the Baptist was going along and preaching, and, and Jesus came along, and he pointed him out and said, There he is! There's the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world! There's the Messiah! John pointed him out as the Son of God, and Andrew went and found his brother Peter and said, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. Don't you know, there were Jewish people who were tired at that time, tired of being under the heel of the iron boot of Rome, okay? The people who longed for the promised Messiah to come and to deliver them and save them and set up his kingdom and to bring peace and joy and relief again from their sorrow and their oppression. It had been 400 years since even a prophet's, a true prophet's voice had been heard. Many had long abandoned God and the prophecies and religion altogether, or they had become worshipers of the law rather than the God of the law. But some still held on to the hope that he would come like he said he would. Some people still had a little grasp of it. Some people still said, he said he was coming back. I believe it's going to happen. I believe he will one of these days. But it had been so long since they'd heard a word. It had been so long, so many years, and he hadn't come. When, when, when was he going to come? Now. Andrew says, we found him. He came. See, now the Christ is here. Andrew's excitement must have been greatly stirred 
when he said, we found him. I've spent the day with him and it's really him. Uh, Peter, uh, come on and I'll show you. I'll introduce you to him. Then imagine how Peter must have felt when he heard those words. Are you serious? You, you, are you for sure it's him? You know, I thought of I thought of the poor and needy and downtrodden people who had only known the harshness and brutality of Rome. Uh, they'd only known the insensitivity and coldness of the Jewish religious bunch. The, the, religi the priests and the Pharisees and the, the Sadducees and all these ones who were supposed to be the Levites and all of the ones that were supposed to be a part of the temple and the worship of God and supposed to bring them to Christ and show them uh, God. And yet they were the very ones that were beating them down and, and rejecting them and taken from them. And if that wasn't bad enough, even the traitorous publicans took what little money or possessions they had left. Publicans were their own people who had, uh, who were signed up and working for the Romans and coming and taking what they had and giving it to Rome or keeping it for themselves. And these people had, had nothing. They had nothing left. But while holding on to a sliver of hope that there's one coming who will save us and overcome all of this, the Messiah appears. Jesus shows up. He came to this earth like he promised. And he came to reveal the Father to us, but he came uh, to rekindle the wavering hope of the coming Messiah. What hope and excitement must have stirred in people's hearts again as Jesus walked the hills, as he healed the sick, and as he taught amazing uh, things, and uh, uh, as he spoke the, the and gave parables, and as he answered the religious crowd, and as he preached uh, the kingdom of heaven, and as he cast out devils, and as he raised people from the dead, and as he changed and saved people's lives. Oh, the excitement that must have stirred in the, in the folks, in the people's lives. Now listen, if he hadn't risen, what hope would we have? Where would we be? What, what would your daily life be like right now if he hadn't risen? Remember before you found the Lord and salvation? Remember the longing and emptiness and loneliness and hurt and wandering and meaninglessness that was in your life? Remember seeking and searching after fulfillment in everything that you went after and finding the, the more you went after, the less fulfillment and peace you found? Remember the misery that it was? The despair? Remember that? What if in your longing and search he was not there to be found because he was still dead and he wasn't risen. What if you were still lost in your sin? Where would you be? You see, he is risen is a very important few words. It means everything to us because it proved he was God and it finished the work that needed to be done. Now, I use the word hope here some. The word hope means greatly desiring something and knowing you're going to get it. That was kind of my own terminology based on the definitions I looked up. 
greatly desiring something and knowing that you're going to get it, then confidently waiting for it. Okay, I'm going to tell I'm going to show you what your face looks like when you're confidently waiting for something. Okay? Because hope is always accompanied. Real, true hope in Christ Jesus is always accompanied with some peace and some joy. That's what comes with hope. To only wish or desire. Now, the difference between hope and wishing or desiring is that they have no foundation, nothing they're based on. They're just hoping against all odds that you'll get that thing. Like when you were 14 years old and you, you wished that that certain girl would like you. And it didn't happen, did it? <laughs> all right. Or you wished your team would win that championship and they didn't. Okay. And, uh, uh, but wish or, or hope always is accompanied with some peace and joy. Wish and desire almost always are accompanied with pain and disappointment because you're just wishing on something that has no guarantee it'll come. Listen to me. Jesus rose from the dead and he gave us hope that we can know he's coming again. <clears throat> you see, he did rise, and we have that hope, that inner assurance that he is there. The people of the world are dying, but we can go on living, no matter how bad it gets. And by the way, I understand it's getting bad, but we can go on living. Because we have hope. Acts chapter 2, verse 24 and 25 says, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden or held of it. For they speaketh, I'm sorry, for David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is my right hand, he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore, did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. That's good stuff. Amen. Didn't do a very good job of reading those three verses. Actually, verse 26 also. Okay. But David said, I shall rest in hope. Okay. Why? Because God hath raised him from the dead. David said that way back there. He lived in hope back there. He knew what was going to happen. Hallelujah. Jesus arose. Did Jesus stir up and rekindle hope that was dying in people's hearts? Yes. Does he still give hope to people like us today? Yes. Mission accomplished and the last thing is this we'll have some more things next week but his mission he came to this earth jesus came to this earth on a mission he came to reveal the father he came to rekindle wavering hope of the coming messiah and number three he came to redeem fallen man okay he came to be our savior he came to deal with our sins. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Okay, he came to pay for our sins and buy us for himself. He came to redeem fallen man. And now think of that phrase to redeem, to buy, to spend. And what did he spend? He spent everything. If you spent everything you had, it better be something worth something. Listen to me. He spent everything he had so he could have you. Are you worth it? 
I'm not. I ain't worth three dead flies. I, 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 you know, I mean, think about it. Why did he do that for me? But he did. He redeemed fallen man. He didn't redeem righteous man. He didn't redeem great and mighty, uh, wonderful, awesome man. He redeemed fallen man. See, one of the things of his mission was to come down here so he could redeem us, us wicked, dirty, worthless sinners. The Jews knew he was coming to save, but those who knew the truth knew that he would save the Gentiles too, that everyone was included. You can read your Old Testament, you'll find everyone was included back then as well. That he included the Jews, the Gentiles, the rich, the poor, men, women, children. I thought of children. You know, he said, suffer the little children to come unto me. He, he said, don't turn, don't send them away. Don't, don't say they're getting in the way. He said, I send you except you become like one of these. You can't get saved. Uh, bring them to me. They might get saved now. He came to redeem us all. Nobles, kings, queens and princes, harlots and publicans. He came to redeem us all. Now many Jews believed and longed for him to come and save them, physically speaking. Okay, They wanted a king who would who would come and set up a literal kingdom and restore uh, them back to their place and bless them in this life again and, and, and make everything right and, and so that they could live the rest of their lives, you know, happy and, and powerful and, and dominance again and with things good. But he came to do so much more than that. Okay? He came to save us from ourselves from our sin, from hell. Okay? He came to make us new on the inside and to be part of the eternal kingdom of heaven. Not just a kingdom that would last until you die, but, but be part of the kingdom that is eternal. See, he came to redeem fallen man, to, to forgive us and truly, totally cleanse us. To, to do all of that, that is wonderful. For sin to be removed, it had to be paid for. We were doomed and destined to pay for it ourselves because it was us who committed the sin. And the only payment for sin was death. We had no way out, no hope, only sorrow and guilt and regret and impending doom hanging over our heads. Yet Jesus came to die in our place taking sin's penalty upon himself instead. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Listen to me. If Jesus hadn't risen from the grave, no sins would have been forgiven. There would be no clean hearts in the world, no changed lives. 2,000 and something years later, 
we wouldn't be saved either. The church would have died or never got started in the first place. Way back there. There would be no church. Think about this world without churches. Now, I know we're gradually, uh, or quickly for that matter, coming to that place where there's less and less uh, of godly people, and less and less Christians, and less true churches and all of that. But there are still churches, and there are still Christians. There are still people who are saved. But if he hadn't risen from the grave, if he hadn't risen from the dead, there would be no Christians. There would be no churches. What, be, what would life be for us now? Because this, I'm... I was born in 1970. This was my appointed time to be here. I, I, what would my life be? Would I still have life? And would it be worth living if I did? What would the world be like right now? What if there were no Christians, no churches in the world? Where would you be? Where would you be headed? Straight to hell to pay for your sins and me too. No way out. We'd have no hope and without God in the world. Ephesians 2.12 But listen, he did rise. Okay? He did pay our way out. Okay, he redeemed us. And we can be his. We can. And I am. We have hope. We have forgiveness. I, listen to me. I have been forgiven. You don't want to know my sins, and I ain't going to tell them to you. Just, just to be real honest. But this old preacher ain't perfect. He's not only far from it, he's, he's, he has lived as wicked as anybody. But I have been forgiven. We can have joy. Do you have joy? I'm not talking about once in a while something makes you laugh. I'm not talking about happy because you have a good day. Happy, again, as I always say, it, it's based on circumstances, what happens. Okay? It's luck. Well, if, you, if things went right, then you're happy. No, I'm talking about do you have joy unspeakable and full of glory? Joy down deep in your heart. We can have that. Do you have it? We can have assurance. Assurance my sins are forgiven. I, I can be assured that he forgives me every time I mess up again and, and I confess it. I can be assured that I'm in him, that I'm going to heaven. That, I'll, that, that he'll never, no one can ever pluck me out of his hand. That I'm going to be there with him forever. I can be assured of that. And I am, by the way. We can have peace. Because he rose again and finished it and proved that he was God and, and did everything he said he was going to do and everything he came to do. See, one thing he came to do was redeem fallen man and that's me and he did so did jesus solve our sin problem yes did he solve our hell problem oh yes did he redeem and save people back then yes does he redeem and save people even today in 2021 in this crazy world today, does he save in this day and age? Yes. How do you know? I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living. I know it. Whatever men may say, the hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find, none other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along the narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. 
I know it. He saved me. I know there is a difference in before I got saved and after. I know that I was a different creature back then than I am now. And that it was an old rotten thing back then. And now it's a new and righteous and good one because of Christ Jesus. I know that my sins are gone and washed away. And I don't carry that guilt and all that stuff around. He took it and cast it as far as the east is from the west. I know that my life is different. And I know it's because of him. He came to redeem fallen man. Did he get that job done? Yes. Mission accomplished. Now, in conclusion, if he hadn't risen, it all would have fallen through. If he hadn't stayed, if he had stayed in the grave, it would have meant he was just another sinful man. His death would have been the end. The end of all the things he claimed and did and spoke and came to do, it would have been the end of it all and it would have all faded off into history and disappeared. Do you believe there's a God? Have you met Jesus who is the image of the invisible God? Have you met him yourself? Have you met the one who revealed the Father to us? Is he your Father or is he just God? Have you been redeemed, forgiven, cleansed, cleaned, cleaned up inside and out, top to bottom? Have you been cleaned up and, and all of your sins washed away? Are you waiting confidently in true hope and peace? Knowing either you're going to go see him or he's going to come see you. Knowing for sure it's going to happen. Listen, you can either wait in hope of him or you can wander helplessly toward hell. I'm saved. I'm redeemed. I know him. He is risen. That means everything to me. If you have need of salvation and you don't know for sure these things. By the way, if you think you're saved but you don't know for sure, that's a miserable place to be. There's no peace with that. There's no assurance because you don't know for sure. Okay? You need to get that settled. You need to get it set in stone. You need to get it nailed down to where nothing can pull that thing up. Wouldn't you like to know that I can help you with that? I can. I, I can show you in the word of God how you can know that you know that you know that you're saved. If you need that, let me help you with that. Let, let's get that settled. If you're lost, you can get saved today. You can trust Jesus as your Savior. You can say, I believe in this old book. I believe that he is risen. I believe that he is God. I believe that history proves he was more than God. I believe that uh, the witnesses and the church that has been going ever since then and all of that has happened, I, I believe that is true. And I'm going to let him into my life. Let him forgive me and save me. And he can, he will. If you're wavering or doubting or going all astray, you can get right back in there as well. He is God. He is risen. He is the answer that we need for all things. He came to this earth on a mission. He accomplished everything he set out to do. Mission accomplished. Next week, we'll get into some other things. But for now, let us pray and we'll dismiss. Our Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you for your goodness and grace. Pray, God, that you would bless Jesus' message to do something in someone's heart. And we thank you for it. We, we praise you for everything. Pray that you would work and save souls and lives and, and help us, God, to draw closer to you. We ask everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's my shortest sermon in years. All right, people. Hope that... Uh,
Hope y'all have a good day and God bless Pastor Randy signing off.